my friends, Superman here in the Rosa Stringworks workshop, able to break strong necks in a single bend. More on that later. Oh my gosh, I got a whole tale to tell you about that. Last night, my oldest granddaughter, Kaylee, graduated from high school. We drove to the Chaffetz Center in or uh, Chaffetz Arena, I guess you'd say, uh, near downtown St. Louis, just kind of on the outskirts of downtown. Long drive, got home at a little after 11 o'clock p.m., and uh, we got to see her do her thing, and very proud of her. So it's neat to have seen her grow up from, from a baby to the graduation, and I wish her well. The sad story on Starlink is that I did order the mobile thing. They told me it was shipped. And according to the tracking, it is now scheduled for delivery tomorrow late in the day. So there will be no shop talk tomorrow again because our internet service has just deteriorated and has not gotten better like the little T-Mobile service rep told me it would get better, or technical rep in this case. The T-Mobile uh, rep said that uh, just in a few days, the service will be restored back and will be very good. In fact, it will be better than ever. Well, maybe in a few more days it will, but by then I'll have this Starlink mobile and I'll be trying that out. The, the sad thing is that next week we won't be able to have a shop talk either unless I take the Starlink mobile with me down to Arkansas and we do a live remote shop talk and we might do that you just never know so stay tuned for whatever happens <laughs> and your guesses is just about as good as mine okay back to the sad story here on the yamaha you can see i put the bridge on here and that went pretty well my research tells me that these yamahas were built with hide glue based on what I was able to research. Based on my experience, I would say absolutely they were built with hide glue. Based on taking the bridge off, based on taking the neck off, they were built with hide glue. Hide glue is not the cure-all, be-all, do-all that everyone says it is. Most people do not know. They only regurgitate what they've been told. And what they've been told is you can't use anything but hide glue on an instrument because hide glue is easy to take apart. And I say in unequivocal terms, hide glue sucks so bad that it's not even funny. It should be outlawed from instruments, actually. I mean, yeah, it was great back in the ox cart days when, you know, ox carts were the best form of transportation. Hide glue was the best glue you could get. I have no qualms about that. It's still a strong glue to some degree on some level. The problem with hide glue is that it is inconsistent as anything you've ever seen. It's one batch of hide glue will be brittle, break apart. You just look at it wrong and it breaks and the instrument comes apart. The next batch is softened by heat so easy that you leave it in a hot car and within 30 minutes it's coming apart. The next batch is completely opposite of both of those. It sticks like steel and it doesn't matter if you take dynamite to it, it won't come apart. Guess what one I got a hold of yesterday? The dynamite version. First of all, I kind of knew I was in for trouble when that bridge was really hard to get off. It was not easy to get off at all, compared to most of them I take off. You got to realize, this is not anywhere near my first rodeo. I couldn't even begin to guess how many bridges I've taken off in my career. It's got to be way up in the hundreds, if not in the low thousands. I've done at least dozens upon dozens upon dozens of necks. I would say I've taken out more necks than 99% of the people watching this video. That's not a brag, it's just a black and white factual statement. I kind of know what I'm doing when it comes to taking a neck out. I've been there, done that. You know, after you take out about three necks, you kind of know what to expect for the most part. Well, until I got a hold of this one. 
you have seen me on camera, and I know many of you have seen the video where I took the neck out of the guitar I built with tight bond, absolutely for sure, 100% positive built with tight bond. And I took the neck out of that guitar to reset it because I just didn't do a very good job of setting it up the first time. I reset that neck in 15 minutes, or at least I got the neck out of the guitar in 15 minutes on camera. An hour and 45 minutes into taking this neck out, glued with hide glue, an hour and 45 minutes, I started getting a little bit of movement. It's starting to wiggle and it's starting to wiggle more and more. And so I'm thinking, okay, it's gonna come loose. It's gonna come loose. It did. This was a two piece joint. This joint, you know, I had put enough steam and moisture in there that this joint had finally, the glue had finally softened enough there that that's what came loose. And you see the dowel pin there, there's a dowel pin right there. That dowel pin goes into that hole there. So this, it came loose at the joint. It didn't technically break, you know, so it's not broken as such. But that's the only part that came loose. This part of this neck is not loose even slightly after two full hours of steaming it and wigging, wiggling it and using a, a neck press. I had my neck press on here when this came loose. Now that neck press has nothing to do with this joint as you, you, if you understand how that works. It was not putting any pressure on this joint at all. This joint just came loose on its own. Bottom line is, hide glue absolutely sucks. It sucks canal water and it's, it just really should be outlawed from being used on instruments. Regardless of what all the quote unquote professionally, classically trained technicians will tell you. They don't know what they're talking about. And that's just the bottom line. You can believe what you want to believe. Had this been glued with tight bond, I guarantee you within 30 minutes maximum, it would have been out of the guitar. There'd have been no damage whatsoever. It's still not exactly damaged or anything. It's just that that's one more thing now that I have to repair. By the way, you will see all of this on the real video whenever it comes out. And you'll see the real struggle and see how it went. I know I don't have very many detractors. I'm very lucky that way and I am very appreciative that way. But for the two or three detractors that there are, I just simply say to you, talk is really cheap. Come show me. That's all I got to say about that. You just come show me. I don't need to hear your talk. Okay, so that leaves me in a predicament though. And I'm honestly not sure what the best approach is. I would know exactly what the best approach is were it not for this goofy dowel pin that's in here that, you know, was a, it aligns this. Now I could easily get rid of the dowel pin by just cutting it off and I might just do that. The problem is I could, I could actually just cut my losses, you know, just taper this just slightly, and I mean only slightly, put this back in here and reset the neck that way. And I mean it would only take the slightest taper. I mean like, I'm talking like a few thousandths on this end would change the neck enough, believe it or not. I know it probably doesn't seem like that to you, but I do know what I'm talking about. It only, because it's such a long distance, just a few degrees here, changes this a lot. Just, just a cut, you know, like you can see, barely see it move it here, but you can see the head moving a lot, see? So it barely takes anything. So without that dowel pin, I could easily just reset it right here and just go and cut my losses and go from there. But, you know, with the dowel pin there, I can't really force it to go down. It's not gonna go, you know? What I would really prefer to do but I already know what I'm in for if I prefer and, and stick to this. I would prefer to get the rest of this out of there. It didn't loosen up even that much. After two solid hours of putting boiling, steaming water into this, I mean hot, hot, hot water, 
And that, remember, hide glue is the one that's supposed to come apart easy with steam and, you know, with, with heat and all that. For the hundred people that are going to tell me, you should try the new dry heat. Let me tell you something. If it doesn't come apart with wet heat, it ain't even going to start to come apart with dry heat. I used dry heat on this, and that was very, very difficult to get off with dry heat right here direct dry heat I mean the whole thing was heated very hot what would be the what would you think would be the odds of sticking a little tiny probe down there in one little tiny spot and heating up that one little tiny spot and maybe moving it over and heating up another little tiny what do you think the odds are of this whole thing getting hot enough to come out let me tell you the odds would be about one in 40 billion so it isn't gonna happen the wet penetrates much better the, I am sure it is hide glue because you can tell by the texture of it when you get it out. It, hide glue, I, if you, all I can tell you is from experience, you can tell when you get it in your hand. And it rolls up into little balls type stuff. It, it, it'll do one of two things. It'll either reconstitute and, and, be, and be sticky or it'll kind of roll up into little balls type stuff. And I've had it do both things. And really, I've had it do both things on the same instrument. But on this one, all it does is, it doesn't reconstitute at all. It just kind of rolls up into like little balls type stuff. It's a little bit uh, sticky, but not very much. Man, I really don't know what to do on this. I really don't, I'm stumped. Never had one any more difficult than this to take apart. I've had some that have been really hard to get apart, really hard. But I don't think I've ever had one at all that I spent two solid, continuous hours. You know, I'm, I'm putting the steam in there. The steam is just boiling. I mean, it's just, the steam was working perfect. I mean, it was going down in there. There was lots of steam getting down in there. It was hot, it was wet, and I'm wiggling it back and forth. And for an hour and 45 minutes, nothing. Then finally it started wiggling and basically it wiggled this joint loose and came loose right here and that's it. And maybe you can see, yeah you probably can, right there you can see how I drilled down through the side of the dovetail. You can see, you probably see it there and uh, see it there for sure. How I drilled down through the side of the dovetail to get the steam down in the side. Now normally you don't do that but after over an hour of trying and getting no movement at all, I tried that and I thought that might help. And that's about when I started getting some movement, but all it did was just make the top part come loose. Did I ever tell you it's not easy being me? Like I said, talk is cheap. You think you can show me how? I mean, I'd love for you to come right here on camera and show me how. I'll be the first one to bow down to you and go like this. You are the master, if you can show me how. I, I'm serious, I don't think this, this joint here cracked even the slightest amount. Not even the slightest amount. So I don't know what to do now. I really think I'd have to cut my losses and make the, just fix, fix the shape as is and put it back together. I feel fairly sure the tight bond would hold it um, because this is a fairly large surface area. I don't think the dowel pin's all that terribly necessary. I gotta think it through because I honestly don't know. Well, that's my sad uh, dilemma and uh, I have to find some way to overcome it. And to the customer who owns this guitar, all I can say is, sorry, I'm doing the best I can. We'll see you tomorrow, but not on a shop talk probably just in another blog. Thanks for watching. Thank <laughs> you.